You awake on a mission to conquer castles and free the cities of the Levant, but a formidable opponent stands in your way. How you maneuver your armies to defeat that opponent is the challenge that awaits you in Sultans and Kings the Card Game, which was designed by Firas el Adu and published by Nazma Productions LLC. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Murphy of the Brothers Murph and I'm here at Board Game Geek. Now a new battle is about to begin, so let's get this game down to the table to go a little more in focus on Sultans and Kings the Card Game. Sultans and Kings is a card game where Saracens and Crusaders will vie for control of cities and castles using army and strategy cards. Each player will begin with 13 cards, 9 army cards of varying rank and strength, and 4 strategy cards used to impact the battles even further. The castle and city cards are laid out creating the battle area. On a player's turn, they will choose to play one of their cards face down over a castle or city they hope to control. The turn then proceeds to the next player who will place a card down on a different castle or city or on top of a previously played card, either strengthening their presence or challenging an opponent's power. Beginning with the second turn, players may decide to deploy a card from one city or castle to another, shifting their strength and control elsewhere. Players can only have three face down cards at a time, so if they wish to play a fourth card face down, they must first flip one other card face up, revealing what it is, and if it is a strategy card, having it take effect. Speaking of strategy cards, having a strong army is important, but using that army strategically is even more crucial. Every player is given four strategy cards, which can be used differently. The siege card may be played to stop opponents from adding or removing cards from a city or castle, however opponents may still play a siege card on top, gaining the advantage. Accuracy and morale add one or two to a player's battle score respectively, but these cards must be accompanied by army cards or they hold no value. Lastly, players can play an assassin to eliminate a previously played assassin or the highest ranking army unit when no assassin is present. To play an assassin, that player must already have a friendly card at that location. Players will take turns playing and deploying cards until everyone has played all their cards, at which time all face down cards are revealed and battles are resolved. Each city and castle is a separate battle. Players compare their army strength and applicable strategy cards take effect. In this example, the red assassin eliminates the blue assassin, saving the red four, allowing red to win the battle and claim the card. In conquest mode, players vie for the most city and castle points. Each city or castle is worth points shown in the top right of the card. Players can also complete color sets for an extra point. The green and blue Saracens will gain an extra point for claiming Montreal, while the red and yellow Crusaders will gain an extra point for claiming Edessa. Players will tally up their points and the highest score wins. Alternatively, players can play Mission Mode, which allows players to receive a special mission which will give specific win conditions and the player who accomplished their mission is the winner. Sultans and Kings presents a mix of tug of war for cities and castles, and strategic moves like bluffing with face down cards or using a well placed assassin. Players can play independently or on team play in four player games and can explore the all out conquest mode or enjoy trying to accomplish a specific mission. And if Sultans and Kings the card game seems like a game you'd enjoy, consider checking out its page at BoardGameGeek.com to watch a review. And until next time, I'm Mike Murphy, I've been here at BoardGameGeek, and we've been going in focus on Sultans and Kings the card game. Have a great day.